This is the seventh section of the differentiation chapter, parametric differentiation. And we need to be able to differentiate a parametric function. And remember we said before that we can treat dy dx like a fraction. And here you can see it's got dy dt over dx dt. So let's, let's go through this and um, see what's going on. Right, so first of all, when we have a parametric um, equation, you will have x as a function of t, and you will have y as a function of t, a different function of t. So if I differentiate this, I will have dx dt, and that will be what you get when you differentiate this side and here i'll have dy dt and again i'll have what the derivative of that g function is but we want to find dy dx now dy dt which is this bit here if i divide it by dx dt that's the same as doing dy dt times by dt dx. What happens? Well, we can cancel those down and we end up with dy dx. And this is what we want, dy dx. So to summarize what we need to do, if we've got this parametric differentiation, you want to do the uh, y part differentiated so whatever your y part of the um, parametric equation is you want to differentiate it divided by the x part of your parametric equation differentiated and that basically is all you need to do that will give you dy dx right this example here um, it says find the gradient at the point where p, uh, point p where t equals 2 and we're given this parametric equation here. So the first thing we're going to do is actually to find dx dt, which is going to be 3t squared plus 1. And we also want dy dt, which is going to be 2t. So dy dx is going to be that y part differentiated, which is 2t, over 3t squared plus 1. So that's our dy dx. And we want to find the gradient, the point p when t is 2. So all we need to do is substitute 2, it, two into that. So we will have 2 times 2 over 3 times 2 squared plus 1. So that's 4 over 3 times 4, 12, plus 1, 13. Okay, so the point P, um, the gradient, so gradient at P is 4 over 13. This one, find the equation of the normal um, at point P. It's always point P, uh, where theta equals pi over 6 to the parametric equations, right? Okay, so we start this time by finding dx d theta. So it's not t this time. Theta is the uh, parameter that can change. That will be 3 cos theta, because it's just times by 3, whatever sine theta is differentiated which is cos theta and then dy d theta that's going to be minus 5 sine theta so from there we can get dy dx so that's going to be the y part differentiated over the x part differentiated so you could simplify that to minus five thirds tan theta. 
Uh, so we've got what dy dx is. So find the equation of the normal to the curve at that point. OK, so um, at pi over 6, what's dy dx? So dy dx is going to be minus 5 over 3 times the tan of pi over 6. So remember, anytime we do any trig with um, differentiation, we're always going to be in radians. So make sure in radians. So minus 5 over 3 times by tan pi over 6. And I'm going to write down the exact value here because I don't really want to be rounding decimals. OK, so um, that's the gradient um, at that point. I want the normal. So uh, normal gradient is going to be the reciprocal of that and with a minus sign or flip the sign. So it now just becomes 9 over 5 root 3. So that's the gradient of the normal. Uh, what we want is an X and a Y coordinate so that we can uh, use Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. So uh, again, at pi over 6, the X coordinate is going to be 3 times sine pi over 6. So let's work out what that is. 3 sine pi over 6. And that gives us 3 over 2. And y, the y coordinate is going to be 5 cos pi over 6. So 5 times cos pi over 6. And we get 5 root 3 over 2. 5 root 3 over 2. So we're going to be using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 so y minus 5 root 3 over 2 equals m which is 9 5 root 3 uh, x minus x1 x minus 3 over 2 now the question doesn't say anything about the form they want the answer left in so what we've just written down there is fine as a final answer unless the question says they want it written in a particular form now i know in the book they go on to simplify but there's no need to unless the question says something like you know leave your answer in the form y equals mx plus c or leave your answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero where a b and c are integers unless it says that there's no need to do it you're you're taking up extra time doing working and actually you may do some work and make make some mistakes so it's absolutely fine to leave your answer like that that is the equation of the line yeah we don't need to do any more than that and if you were to do some more then you might multiply through by two and then multiply through by five root three to get rid of those uh, fractions and then move everything over to one side to do y equals mx plus c but the question doesn't state which form to leave it in so it's fine to leave it like that right you should now be able to do exercise 9g on pages 251 to 253 of the textbook